the Conservative Citizens Council. The uh, young man who murdered nine people at Mother Emanuel Church says that in his, in his manifesto, and this, this website has been tracked, is registered to him, it, it's fairly clear that this is actually his writing his manifesto. And a lot of it is not being um, uh, published or discussed in the media. Uh, instead, it's easier, I think, to talk about uh, should South Carolina take down the, the racist, traitorous, treasonous stars and bars flag. Which, by the way, Mitt Romney, I never thought I would salute Mitt Romney for political courage for statesmanlike behavior. But he tweeted out over the weekend that it's time to take down the flag, that it's become a symbol of racism. Mitt Romney. The other Republicans, well... <laughs> so, we'll, but we'll get into that. But it turns out that this kid was... Well, actually, I'll, I'll share it with you in his own words. As much as I... Um, dislike the idea of giving a platform to a killer and a racist. I think if we're going to have any kind of conversation about how this comes about, we need to, for a moment at least, get inside this kid's head. How does this kind of racial hatred grow in a young white man. And ironically, he keeps referring to white privilege without even realizing it. We'll get to that. We'll get to that. But first, the first part of this is, is uh, basically he, you know, we're all concerned about ISIS recruiting Americans to go over and fight in Syria using their website. Or, uh, even worse, recruiting Americans to commit murder here in the United States, as has happened apparently a, a couple of times in the last few months. How is the, cons the Council of Conservative Citizens different from ISIS in terms of you know, recruiting people for hate? This is from... This kid, I, you know, I'm not going to use his name. That, 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 that's, although his name is everywhere and his picture is everywhere. But this is what the killer, the alleged killer. Well, you yeah, know, this isn't a news program. This is an opinion program. What the hell? This is what the killer had to say. He posted this on his, uh, his own website, registered to him. It's called lastredesion.com. I don't think the website's still up, but in any case, he, he wrote, I was not raised in a racist home or environment. Living in the South, almost every white person has a small amount of racial w awareness simply because of the numbers of Negroes in this part of the country, but it is a superficial awareness. Okay. Now, you know, I've pointed out many times that the the best part about white privilege is that white people don't have to sit around thinking about the fact that, hey, I'm white. I wonder how that's going to influence this job interview. I wonder how that's going to influence how I'm treated at a restaurant tonight. I wonder how that's going to influence whether I can grab a cab. I wonder how that's going to influence how I'm treated when the police officer pulls my car over because my taillight's out or just pulls my car over because he feels like it. White people don't think about those things. They don't have to think about those things because the power structure in this country from its founding to today, is white. But somehow that, you know, for this kid, that he missed that. I mean, you know, it's, it's like, you know, fish not noticing the water that they swim in. He says, the event that truly awakened me was the Trayvon Martin case. I kept hearing and seeing his name, and eventually I decided to look him up. I read the Wikipedia article... That's the one thing I was going to do this morning I haven't done yet, is to go read the Wikipedia article on uh, the Trayvon Martin case and uh, 
Shane, can you find that and print it out, and I'll read it during the break at the bottom of the hour. Um, because, uh, you know, one of the things I've found about Wikipedia is so very often if there's an agenda, if somebody's got a serious agenda, they will figure out a way to make Wikipedia reflect that. Whether it's, uh, you know, f- f- phony baloney arguments about the New Deal or about Smoot hawley or about tariffs, or I, it just goes on and on and on. It's, it's the, the, you know, Wikipedia is a fine thing for non contentious information. You know, if you want to know if colchicine is a mutagen, it's easy to look up. But if you want to know anything that has to do with something that is politically contentious, it's really difficult to know exactly what it is you're reading, which is unfortunate. And, and I don't have a solution for it. I mean, I support Wikipedia. I think it's, it's a great, it was a great idea. It's a great thing. But it's open nature. I, you know, I, I know that there are right-wing think tanks in this town. I walked through one about four years ago. Um, it was more like six years ago. Uh, where, uh, Wiki, you know, there was a bunch of young people sitting at computers, and Wikipedia was up on every one of their computers. They were all editing Wikipedia pages. Now, maybe they've been able to put a stop to that by looking at DNS numbers and things like that. But on the other hand, if they're just using a VPN, they could all have unique DNS numbers and even unique states, locations, countries for that matter. Anyhow, he says, the event that truly awakened me was a Trayvon Martin case. I kept hearing and seeing his name, and eventually I decided to look him up. I read the Wikipedia article, and right away I was unable to understand what the big deal was. It was obvious that Zimmerman was in the right. But more importantly, this prompted me to type in the words black-on-white crime into Google, and I have never been the same since that day. The first website I came to was the Council of Conservative Citizens. There were pages upon pages of these brutal black-on-white murders. I was in disbelief. At this moment, I realized that something was very wrong. How could the news be blowing up the Trayvon Martin case while hundreds of these black-on-white murders got ignored? And then he goes on to say, From here I found out about the Jewish problem and other face issues facing our race, and I can say today that I am completely racially aware. He goes on to say, Black people view everything through a racial lens. That's what racial awareness is. It's viewing everything that happens through a racial lens. They're always thinking about the fact that they are black. This is part of the reason they get offended so easily and think that something are and think that some things are intended to be racist toward them when even a white person would not be thinking about race. See here he's 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 explaining white privilege without realizing it. He says, black people are racially aware almost from birth, but white people on average don't think about race in their daily lives, and this is our problem. We need to and have to. Modern history classes, he writes, instill a subconscious white superiority complex in whites and an inferiority complex in blacks. This white superiority complex that comes from learning of how we dominated other peoples is also part of the problem I've just mentioned. But of course, I don't deny that we are in fact superior, he writes. So the the council the cons, the council of conservative citizens these this thing grew out of these various councils of white citizens which first sprang up in the summer of 1954 right after the Brown v Board decision by the Supreme Court and they were they were groups that published publications and things and the whole the whole point of it all was to educate white people about how basically how important it was to maintain apartheid in the United States because we were in a, up until 1954 we were legally arguably until 1965 we were legally in apartheid state this is the Tom Hartman program in fact i think you could say until the 70s or maybe you know when when we outlined red line, outlawed redlining we were legally in apartheid state and and we're still in apartheid state 